What's the scariest encounter you've had with a total stranger? A homeless guy asked me for change while I was working nights. I told him sorry I don't have any. Very calm he replies how about we go to an ATM and take some money out before I f king kill you. You don't have to be able to run fast. You just have to be able to run faster than the person you're scared of. He didn't end up chasing me. You say you bolted out of there? When I was around 10-11 a friend invited me me to a water park. During swimming at a wave pool he found some random kid around our age and decided to tell this kid that the game we were going to play was hold me down in the water. I didn't get that memo so I thought him and this kid were just trying to drown me. This went on for what felt like an hour of me swimming away and hiding. I didn't hang out with him afterward. Same trip. After we were done with the pool I got to the changing rooms and there is a couple people in there. Old man on the bench asks me if I wanted him to help me change. I just said no thanks and quickly changed and ran out. 14 years old. Walking home it was dark. Man gets off the bus. Opens up his coat and says like what you see? He was in his 40s. Completely naked. I've never run so fast in my life. Not scary per se but deeply disturbing. Random dude at my local library accosted me while I was enjoying a new sci-fi novel and was absolutely convinced I was his son. Kept telling me he was sorry and he never meant to kill my mother who he called pink and said some other heinous shit I won't describe. Batch t crazy but he sounded so rational and calm the whole time. Went to a yard sale with my aunt when I was like 5. A little boy. About the same age as me. Approaches me and tells me to come inside to meet his dad. I wander off with him without my aunt noticing. And he brings me into the house where the yard sale is taking place. We go down to the basement and there was his naked dad. Lying on a couch excitedly greeting me as if he'd been awaiting my company or something. I actually don't remember much after that. I just got out of there as fast as possible and it's been a strange memory of mine ever since. I hope that little boy is doing okay. Walking to my friend's house the last day of 8th grade. An old lady pulled her car next to me almost cutting off my walking path. I backed away because WTF. She called out to me that she liked my hair. Then she said that her hair used to be my color until she got raped. Better believe my little chunky butt ran to my friend's house and told her parents. Pedo down the street tried to lure my sister and I to his house while we were walking down the street. We started ignoring him. On the way back. He threatened us and we went to my landlord's house to call the police. Guy got arrested shortly after but was bailed out. His dad was a SX offender and there had already been multiple complaints about him from other parents. Glad my sister and I were smart enough not to engage with him and to get help right away. 15 years old on a school trip in London. Shady guy walks up next to me in the subway and staring intently at me. He pushes his thigh against my leg and I feel a little sting. Then I look down and see he is hiding a knife in his pocket. I just froze and he stood there for another few seconds before he walked away. Presumably to terrorize someone else. Must have been some meth head but scared the living shti out of this pimply teenager. A very cheerful guy approached me and my friend in a park. In a very non-threatening way. He was holding a frisbee and explained he was putting together an impromptu game of ultimate frisbee and looking for people to join him. Which was fine. But then he tried to grab me by the throat. It was such a sudden change of mood. My friend, an athletic dude. Fortunately, got between us and just stared him down and he ran away. Only passenger in a train car in Europe late at night. A disheveled man. Wild hair and beard. Tagged sweater entered the car and started pacing up and down the aisle. He is talking to himself in a language I couldn't understand. Every few trips he would stop in front of me and yell at me in whatever language he spoke. I would try to respond. But he didn't know English any more than I understood whatever language he was speaking. He would eventually give up yelling at me and would go back to pacing the aisle and talking to himself. This went on for hours. Really wish I could have recorded him back then so I could eventually find someone to translate it. 
I was about 10. Getting back home from the park with my sister. She. Being the stubborn younger I need no older sister playing mom to me sibling walked purposely 20 meters ahead so nobody would even think we were together. She rounds the corner. And I hear a blood curdling scream. I never cover 20 meters so fast in my life. I round the corner and there's a man. Holding my sister by her throat. Dragging her into an opened car park nearby. When he sees me advancing and yelling incomprehensibly, I honestly don't know what I yelled. I was scared out of my wits, and he realizes there's two of us. He drops her. Jumps into the car and drives off. She had fingerprint shaped bruises on her throat for days. I was 19 and I was sleeping with the window open since it was a hot summer night. My BF and I were both knocked out but all of a sudden I wake up, just opened my eyes didn't get up, and I had a horrible gut feeling and just an overwhelming feeling that I was being watched. I turn to my side and I see someone's head sticking in from the window. Needless to say I had a heart attack and as soon as they heard me get up they left. Older woman approached me on campus asking me to take her to this spot in town since she doesn't know where it is. I say no. It was a new city for me too and she gave vibes. She insists it's right around the corner so it's not that far, so suddenly she knows where it is. I refuse and she hesitates and then walks off. An older guy asks if she needs directions only for her to walk by him. I just thought it was strange but I didn't really think about it. The next week. I check my phone when I get to class and someone posted an article about how this older woman who was tied to multiple cases of human trafficking, was just caught by the police in a nearby town. From the description alone, I was 16 and sitting on a train station with my mother. Some man came over and started talking to her. After a while I looked at the clock and informed my mother that we needed to go because our train was about to arrive. He flew up from the seat and started screaming at me and wanted to fight me. My mother was confused and tried to explain to him that I was her daughter and that we really did need to leave. He just continued screaming which of course made teenage me scream back at him. She had to pull me away from there. I never understood what made him see red like that. All I did was inform my mother our train was coming and we needed to leave. Back when I was 16 working at Lowe's. Some customer who was an old man walked up behind me without me even noticing and whispered in my ear do you know where I can find the hose is it? He said that so close to my ear where I could feel his warm breath while he was caressing my shoulder. My body froze up and all I could say was I think they are in aisle 5 well. Shortly after I found out that he never even went to that end of the store where they were. I had just left my apartment to go for a walk down towards the beach at night when it was pitch black. There was a park along the way. Some guy came up to me asking to use my phone. I apologized and lied and said I didn't have one. He didn't believe me and started to get aggressive. He asked me where I lived and if I had a boyfriend. He started following me and that's when I started to run and went back to my place. I didn't feel comfortable going where I wanted to. I'm 14 and was all alone in a dirt path in India and some guy was just sitting on a rock in the middle of the forest. I didn't make eye contact but I could see he was crying I wanted to help but my gut told me not to. Three days later was caught for murdering his wife and 5 year old daughter. Almost got stabbed but I just apologized as if I did something to offend him. The guy didn't know what to do as I walked away. Edit. Thanks everyone for the great stories and awards. To answer the Canadian question. Nope. I was just an awkward teenager. Back in my teenage years. A friend and I had taken a midnight walk to the gas station while stoned. And while on the way back with our chips and sweets this dude around our age approaches us and demands our money. My friend pulls out his bag of jelly snakes and says. In the creepiest. Drawn out. Vaguely threatening pedo voice. Would you like. A lolly. Little boy. When I was 5 a man tried to kidnap me from my great grandma's porch. Still remember seeing her chase him away with a giant stick lol. Edit. Did her. Edit 2. Thank you for the awards. 
I love that my first comments to blow up on reddit is about how amazing and fierce my great grandma is. I was staying at a motel out of town. I was in my room on the bed in my underwear watching TV. Next thing I know the door opens and a guy walks halfway in. He stops and we just kinda look at each other. I'm freaking out internally. I was 20 and a mama's boy and rarely went anywhere by myself. I didn't know if this was a robbery or a murder. I was completely stuck in fear. He looks at me and mumbles WTF he looks at the door number then his keycard then back at the door number. Then he goes ah oh, they told me my room was 223. I clear the fear in my throat enough to go I've been here all day. You might wanna go tell them there is a mistake. He nods and closes the door and leaves. I'm 40 now and the second I get in hotel motel I deadbolt and chain the door. Me and my siblings were walking across the road to a gas station. We frequently went there to grab snacks and such and then we leave and go for a walk down a road behind it. Well a car starts following us with its headlights off so I quickly dip telling my siblings to follow me. So we start running through a field and lay on the ground to wait for them to leave. Well they drive down the road and then circle back. This happens about 4-5 times before they gave up and we went home. I was a teen working in a cinema. After cleaning and locking up I had to go by the bank and deliver the cash to a bank box, any amount between 2 and 8k euros. One day I was locking the front door. There's a pub on their other side of the alley. It was a busy night so there was way more cash than usual. I come from a Scandinavian town that is not too busy. But sometimes in the summer it can get pretty crowded. I was a little nervous because I had so much money on me. I'm a little paranoid. All of a sudden a man in a jokingly voice says hands up and give me the money. I got so visibly scared that he excused himself. He then leaves laughing. Probably drunk. Man I got scared. For some people wondering what I was doing with so much money. I knew the owners very well and they thought nobody would expect the team that cleans up popcorn to carry the cash. TLDR. Had way too much cash on me. In a semi dark alley. I was 21 at the time. And not exactly a small dude by any standards. I was at the old bus depot before they closed it down. And this scrawny guy covered in prison tattoos approached me. Me being a friendly guy. I didn't think much of it. Until he started trying to get where I lived from me. He gave me bad vibes and the way he was rambling made me think then that he was drugged out or something. So I just tried to dodge the question. But he kept rambling and pushing. The bus came around soon after and I never got on the bus faster. I was honestly surprised he didn't try and follow me on the bus. He honestly gave me bad vibes. When I was 10 and my sister was 12 we went door to door in our street selling raffle tickets for our school. There was this one old man. Maybe 65 and very grizzled. Who we'd never spoken to or met. But we saw him sitting on the porch so went up to him to see if he wanted to buy a ticket. He said yes. And starts writing his name. He then proceeds to tell us about his bitch mother who got what she deserved. He wrote his name on the raffle ticket which was clearly fake. Because he wrote Stephen Coleman. He kept going over kill in black pen, over and over and over as he told us horrible stories about his abusive mother and how he got her back in the end. About 6 months later he was gone and his old house was being demolished. Me and my sister went in to look for stuff but there was nothing but an old rotary phone. We broke like 4 windows and left. I'll never forget looking at his old hands gripping then pen tracing over the word kill. The other day I had to pee real bad and walked real fast into quick check to use the bathroom. The ATM is right there and it was being filled. I was like 6. Went to a restaurant with my parents and was on my way to the washroom when this middle aged woman stoked me. Kneeled in front of me and looked me dead in the eyes. Her eyes were spirals. I swear to f king god. I was a kid and didn't know funky eye contacts were a thing. So I thought she was a witch trying to hypnotize me. I started crying. As one does. Closed my eyes to stop the mind control and ran away. Hit my head against a table. Cried some more. This woman really put on spiral eye contacts and said I'm gonna scare the shti out of a kid today. 
she went out and chose violence. I was walking home from the bus stop after school. About 15 years old. It was really not far but there were construction workers drinking on the side of the road. One of them got up and followed me home calling suggestive things. I honestly can't remember what but his intentions were clear. This was about 200 meters from home so I sprint home. We have an automatic gate so I realize he will catch me if I wait for it to open or he'll follow me in. So I climb over which is normally not easy but that day I flew over. I was really shaken up. For me this story is actually about what happened next. Which is that I called my mom who had an intense job. She dropped everything at work. Came home immediately. Made me hot chocolate and pancakes. We had a long conversation where she validated me feelings and fear. She's the best. About 10 years ago. I was taking my girlfriend at the time home around midnight. On very rural back road in North GA. I was half asleep at the wheel when this lady runs out from the woods in front of my truck screaming help me. I slammed on my brakes and rolled my window halfway down as I'm realizing she's covered in blood and mud and sticks and wasn't right. She reached her hands into my cab and grabbed my neck as hard as she could. I took off just a little down the road and found a crowd of distraught people outside their house and figured it was probably related. They asked if I've seen anyone and I told them she almost got run over. Well she had been released from an asylum that day and had stabbed her mother, she showed me the wood on her shoulder. Comma later I drove back by and there were a dozen police cars lit up at the house. Creepy. This may or may not have been a stranger. And I'm still very confused about it to this day. So when I was way younger. 10ish. I would get scared at night. And would ask my younger sister to sleep next to me. One of these nights. I woke up with a sore throat. So I went to drink some water. As I was climbing out bed. I noticed a larger man being in the same bed as us. Me being young and stupid. I thought it was my dad that for some reason wanted to sleep in our bed. When I woke up the next day. And asked my dad about it. He claimed that he slept in his bed. He's not the type of guy to sleepwalk or anything like that. So I was mostly just confused. As I've grown older. I've started to wonder if the dude was ever locked. And that someone decided to sleep in my bed with us in it for some reason. Althou this barely would make any sense. And I still don't know if I was accidentally making it up or if it was real or not. As a teenager a homeless person asked me for money. I obliged. He then proceeded to follow me for several blocks saying it wasn't enough and I should give him more. Learned my lesson that day. At the age of 14-15. I was walking my dog in a forest. I ran into a large guy who told me he had failed to report back to his mental hospital, but I should not be afraid. He told me about visiting the purgatory and how painful that was. And said hell was specifically 1000 times more painful. He gave me colorful details. Like something out of Borsh or the Hindu book of the dead. He begged me to pray for him which I said yes. Of course too. Incidentally. My school gym in those days was located on the opposite side of the road from a mental hospital. And they'd release them for a walk every now and then. We'd run into them on our way to the gym from school. It was a bit eerie but okay since we were in a group. And it was in a city. Being outside of civilization and alone with that guy was terrifying. He wasn't harmful and let me go. But it was deeply uncomfortable. <laughs>